You're listening to Whispers of War. Hello everyone and welcome to show number 24 of Whispers of War. I'm your host Sil and let's just jump into the Warcraft action for this week. Very quiet week for me in all honesty. I've been very busy with uh, with life unfortunately, I have to say. But I did manage to crank in a few hours over the weekend. So I'm actually now thinking of changing my um, Blood Elf Rogue, who is... is I would say, for better words, my main, um, into maybe a troll, maybe a Zandalari troll, even if uh, if those races unlock eventually. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I I think maybe that would be a good thing. But I'm I'm a little bit like, oh, I quite like her transmog, and I don't know if that will look just as good on a troll because you know, transmog is important. People, <laughs> it really is. But um, yeah, I'm hoping that that will um, make her a bit more interesting to me. So who knows? Who knows? Maybe I'm just over uh, elves a little bit. I say that, but in all fairness, I I have played a lot on my uh, my Blood Elf Paladin. Because <laughs> I really, really like her. I like the animations and um, I just like Prop Paladin. I think it's a, it's a very fun spec to, to run around in... Um, in all the BFA content, it's um, not bad being a tank, in all fairness. I thought, you know, DPS spec all the way, but actually, it's quite easy as a tank. So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that that will um, continue with, with leveling. And I, um, mm, I don't know if she could easily, you know, replace my rogue. Uh, from the number one spot because I still really enjoy the tricks that a rogue has, you know, with anything. You can attack it, you can vanish, you can stealth. It it really makes certain things like questing or all those other things a lot easier. Whereas with the paladin, I guess you can bubble half, but it's not really um, what I would do. I think I'm more rogue inclined. Is that a word? I'm more rogue inclined than paladin, but um, so far, I'm having a lot of fun on this uh, paladin of mine. But uh, yeah, the warrior, that's another one. So I don't know, since I when I made this switch from, from caster and range to actually hitting things in the face with swords and daggers. But I, um, I, I like the warrior a lot, especially Fury. Uh, as a lot of you guys know, I, I like the, you know... The, the dashing two things at the charge and jumping through things and just I don't know I like it but and here comes the the big booty but I am not entirely sure if I am a hundred percent happy with the, the the void elf for it and yeah she does look really cool I like the purple hair I like you know the color schemes of void elves have going uh, have going on but I don't don't really feel that it's my thing, if that makes any sense. I know that's really strange. I'm, I'm probably talking more from an RP perspective than anything else, um, because you know, in the end, it, every class does the same thing. So I really think that maybe I'd be happier if I use my troll warrior, who's almost level 90 now, which you know, brings me to the dreaded Cataclysm and uh, Warlords era. <laughs> I don't know if I'm really happy with that, but um, yeah, I'm thinking of maybe um, switching that around. So that means that I don't really have anything going on in on the Lion side except for my Druid. Now that's not a bad thing because because the Druid is four specs. I could focus on those four and just see if Druid, you know, could become maybe a bit more than than what I'm hoping it is at the moment. Like, I I really have a love hate relationship with with Druid. In the beginning, I that was all I played, and then I switched, and you know, ever since I found the Rogue, that that's what I love. But the Druid, because I've had her for so long, I don't just want to give up on her. And there are certain things that I really, really enjoy. I mean, 
come on, having flight for instant flight form uh, when you fall from from crap, except for of course in BFA, but you know what I mean. Um, and the whole shape shifting, uh, I, I quite like the animations for balance. The fact that I could potentially um, tank on her is not a bad thing. I, I like the charge that that. Um, bears have i just need to get a bit more confidence in it i think so yeah maybe it's not a bad thing to just have one character on the lion side that i really want to focus on considering that she's in a lovely guild and then just have these three alts that i potter around on i say three alts it's more like two alts and one main um that i potter around on in the, in the horde side really but yeah maybe maybe i have to play it like that i don't know yet um, but this is the plan for so far, and I'll leave everything else as it is for now. <laughs> um, I, I don't want to focus. You know, when I said, oh, yeah, I'm going to level everything up to 120, I think I was a little bit over, um, over enthusiastic there, not realizing, well, so it also means that you have to go through some shitty content for that. So even though leveling has gotten a lot better and I could just dungeon queue I, I don't know if I want to do that um, I can I'm understanding people better and better who just buy the boosts and just go up oh, fuck it I'm just going to boost it done um, I think the one class or actually the two classes that I'm still a little bit on the fence about is um, Death Knight because I've heard some very good things about Death Knight, but I also hear it's kind of slow. And I like classes that are a little bit faster. I mean, a rogue is, is super fast. And um, I have the same feeling with Fury Warrior. It's quite fast paced. And then the Paladin, maybe not as fast paced, but it, it, you know, it has some good soaking damage. I don't know if I can do the same with a Death Knight. And the other one is the Demon Hunter. Now, Demon Hunters I know are really fast, but I just don't feel like that would be my class. Whereas the Rogue much more. But I, I've always had that with the newer classes. Um, God knows, I've tried Monk for so many times and I just can't get into it. Um, so yeah, I, I, that's where I'm at now. I think, uh, I think Rogue... Druid, Paladin, and Warrior. And I think I'll stick to that for a little bit until probably next week when I decide to do something completely else. But at the moment, that is giving me a little bit of peace. I still wish I could hide my um, my other characters. That would be even better, you know, when you can just have that panel and just go, I'm hiding you. No, I'm not going to delete anyone just because for some weird reason I feel like all of a sudden Blizzard is going to then clean everything up and oh you want to restore something? Nah, it's not happening. So <laughs> I don't want to risk that at all. But um, for for now I'll do this and I'm still debating that race change for my uh, my Blood Elf Rogue. Just yeah, have to find a good transmog that would fit on a, on a troll. I think there are websites out there where you can try it out so might have to do that. Um, and that's really it. Um, I saw that there was a pig mount on the shop. Uh, now, being the consumer whore that I am, <laughs> I actually have not bought it, but I have been thinking about it. Uh, I have to say, I, I think, I don't know what the drama is in the community about it. Um, I, I am very much of the strong belief that if you want to pay for it, then you pay for it. You know, no one else is the judge of your money. You can do whatever you want as long as you, you know, pay your rent, pay your food, <laughs> and all those other things. Who cares? Who cares what you do with your money? Um, if you can afford it, do it. And if it makes you happy, do it. For me personally, at the moment, yeah, I do want it. But I think I might wait a little bit. I've done that with um, with the other mounts in the past as well, except for that fox. I had to get the fox. But this one I might wait and I don't know if I'm going to wait until there's like a discount or something or a deal or I don't know unless there's a time limit on it um, then I have to pull my finger out and do it but at the moment I'm going to wait a little bit just because you know it's been January people and you know it's been a few weeks that you got paid and uh, money money is, a, is a, I think a big problem for a lot of people in this period of time so I, I want to play it a little bit smarter. But talking about mounts, um, I also asked Twitter on my private account a little bit, like, you know, what do you do when you feel like you're in a tiny slump? 
and a lot of people actually came back with some really really good tips now I think I should actually pull some of those up and let you guys know so here we go uh, so Cole said to me you know I end up going back to old content to farm mounts on alts or do world quest map clear for our AP um, if those are feeling dampening pretty much just log until an incursion uh, is up or if we're evading that's not a bad thing actually just to um, you know do some old content to farm mounts or on alts I think I might actually be doing that in a bit I'll, I'll tell you in a bit um, slipper ITE I, I think that's that's how I should say it uh, said I look at the achieves for the current expansion and try to remember myself which I will be disappointed if I don't get done before the end if I'm ahead I go back to old ones that's not a bad thing you know some achievements um, for me personally I only want to do achievements if it will give me something like a title or a mount or anything like that but that's not a bad idea actually Epic Insanity said, for me, I just always go, what haven't I done in a while? Pro uh, professions, PvP, all the expect stuff like tra uh, transmog runs, etc. or PvE. And I go dabble in it. I basically just do the opposite of what I'm doing now and change things up. Now that is a really good tip. So I might actually have to go back to some old content because I've been in BFA stuff, a, you know, for a few months now. And I think maybe it's good to go back to old stuff farm old raids for a transmog or maybe even just get you know reputations up or or try for the mounts and um and see what it is but pvp is one of those things that actually have started to pique my interest a little bit so i might be doing that kristen said currently i'm working on getting all the new toys for the lunar festival also leveling another mage working on archaeology achievements for bfa now that's interesting because I completely forgot that the Lunar Festival was happening, which I should have known with that pig, you know, <laughs> that is kind of like a hint. I, I've not really looked into any of it, and I know that I'm going, going around and getting those, I think it's the coins that you get, that you get experience from that as well. So that would not be a bad thing to do on some of the alts that I need to level, um, if it, if it proves any, any good experience, I guess. Um, and Professor Talib said, a level a new alt. I love questing and seeing old zones again. Catch up on pet battle achievements for old expansions. Farm old dungeons for transmog. Pick a medium difficult achievement to pursue. And right now I'm thinking about the 100 exalted rep achieve. I have 57 so far, so that would keep me busy for a while. Farm that damn mule and Drustvar. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a meal on Drostfar. I have to look for that. I, I didn't even know that, and I love donkeys. So, yeah, I, I will have to um, to look into that one. Um, Ams said, I think I just play a lot less than content releases nowadays, so I always have less done and there's always loads to do because he said he never has a dip. <laughs> so that's really good. But yeah, maybe I should just, you know, slow down. And, and do that. Um, and the crosshair said, just stop playing. <laughs> I said, I can't because of the podcast. I don't really want to stop. Um, so, yeah. Maybe, you know, I don't know. I, I guess I, I would have to go back to some old content probably. And uh, I know that some of you said, well, you can level up that Void Elf uh, warrior then. I don't really want to. <laughs> I don't want to go and properly level like that. Um, even though... It, I have noticed in the past, I don't know if you guys had that, but when you level, like focus on one alt from the start to like the end level, it actually is quite um, satisfying getting that guy or girl up all the way. So I, I do miss that, but I get distracted too quick. So it, it just doesn't work for me anymore. I, um, I, I focus on it for a week and then all of a sudden it's like, ooh, that's shiny. What does that do? And I'm distracted, you know, <laughs> so I don't think it really works for me. Um, I, I guess for the paladin and the warrior, even though the warrior is, is like 85 now, it, it, it makes it a little bit easier because it already is towards 100 and then it's a small step to go to 120. So I'm going to keep at it with that. So the mounts that I, I really want to farm are the fox mount from Legion still. And uh, maybe even the rat mount. I'm not entirely sure if I want to do that because you have to get all those sightless eyes. And then there is the, of course, invincible. 
I would love to have that mount. I think it's really cool and I'd love to have it. But I don't know if it will kill my sanity. <laughs> so we'll see. But I did do I really do enjoy running ICC. It's it's one of those raids that I loved. So it's a shame that um, I don't go in there more often. And, and, you know, Invincible is a good enough reason. So that's really it. So that has been my week. Um, a lot of pondering and a lot of thinking. And I know a lot of people are like probably eye-rolling like, oh my god, still just pick a glass and just stick with it. Having a hard time with it. Um, like I said, you know, I do, I do do a lot of stuff on the Druid and the Rogue. Um, still going through all the storylines. But I still want something that really speaks to me. And I think the Paladin and the Warrior are very close seconds to that. Who knows? Maybe in, in like a few months I might actually make that switch. But we shall see. Um, for now, I shall leave you with an interview that I had with Cadian. And I will talk to you once that is done. So enjoy. And with me today, I am joined by someone all the way, well, I say all the way, but it's actually relatively close compared to all the guests I've had on. I have Cadian from Scotland. Hello, Sel. How Hello. are you doing? I'm very good. Can I say that? Are you, because you're, you're a Scottish accent, I work with a Scottish lady and she sounds more Scottish than you do. So I'm not Scottish. I just have um, a little Scotland. I'm Swedish. Are you? Yeah. Look at how international we are. <laughs> I know, we're just all over the place. So we have a, a Swedish person in Scotland and a Dutch person in England. That's, I love it. Yeah, look at how international we are. <laughs> but I'm assuming, you know, Scotland, Sweden, a lot of like differences to you. How, how are you finding it? I'm really liking it. 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 I know this is not a popular opinion, but I miss the snow and the cold. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> I, yeah, it's, it's really warm up here to me. Um, for January so but I'm really liking it people are so friendly and S Scottish people are wonderful and I'll be honest I love the Scottish accent and I wish I had one and I feel, <laughs> I feel a little silly like trying it out around other Scottish people so I just don't <laughs> <laughs> I am sure in due time you will pick it up I, I think you will start picking up little yeah impacts. I find myself sometimes yeah there's a few words that catch on <laughs> <laughs> yeah i do the same thing now that i've been here for 10 years it's just it goes at a certain point you're like did i actually say that did i just started talking like a local yeah. and that's what happens there's nothing you can do about it right <laughs> no <laughs> so kadian tell everyone a little bit about yourself and what you do absolutely uh i am kadian as i said a swede living in scotland and uh, living here with my wife since september so it's it's quite new the Scotland Ooh. thing. Um, I there's not too much interesting about my personal life right now. I'm just kind of trying to live, um, like so many others. Mm. <laughs> um, but it's good, you know. It's an adventure to live. Um, what I do try to do is be creative. And right now I'm working on a a Warcraft audio drama. Uh, which is called Tales of War, not connected to Whispers of War, I promise. <laughs> um, and basically, it's it's trying to be a machinima, but in audio form. And so I've been I've been using a lot of my my free time for that. But the rest of my life is I just I work in an office. There's not too much interesting about me. <laughs> but so, in all honesty, I think that almost sounds like a full time job what you're doing there. So, do you mind talking a little bit more about what? what it entails and and do you have to use like when you say that it's like a machinima do you use your own voice do you have to um get other people to to help you with voices what exactly happens so basically what i do is i write uh, the script and it's it, it's more or less short stories mm -hmm. and that i that i bind together and so far i've done most of the voices it's also with description so it's not all dialogue mm -hmm. i try to get as much dialogue as possible because it's more interesting to hear characters rather than descriptions of uh, of you know of things so it's sometimes it's much more interesting to hear voices so so far i've done most of the voices there's a blood elf and a gnome that i like that i love dearly mm -hmm. <laughs> um I actually, I've had the great pleasure to have Charm on it. Oh, uh, wow. 
Yeah, which is was wonderful. I, I just reached out to her and asked if she wanted to do a voice, and she said yes. If you don't know who Charm is, she's a a wonderful um, creator who is mainly on YouTube, uh, who creates songs, uh, mm-hmm. both parodies, wow parodies of real songs, but also her own original work, which is amazing. If you haven't checked her out, please do. Um, and yeah, so it, the fact that she got back to me and said yes was amazing. <laughs> Um, I'm only four chapters in, so it, it's there's not a lot yet. But but basically, what I do is I write it out, and I record it. It's about between ten and fifteen minutes in each chapter, so not super long. Um, and it actually, yeah, I just I, I really like writing and I like characters, and mm-hmm. so I just kind of went for it and decided, why not? Let's That's try it. Cool. Um, I'm sure we'll get back to to your your tales of war when we talk about the main topic. Um, so I'll quickly go to a little bit about you know the Warcraft side. Are you Horde or Alliance? I have gone a lot between the factions. Um, I started as a Horde way back when, and then mm-hmm. I switched to Alliance, and then I went back to Horde again. So I've, I've always kind of played both sides. But recently, I am Horde. I've always been Horde deep down in my heart. Uh, <laughs> and I realized this, actually, when, when when I got this question, when you sent it to me, I realized I don't even know the story of the Alliance yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, on, yeah, I haven't played through Kul Tiras yet. Um, so, and I, I'm the kind of person who tried to keep very spoiler-free. So I... I know there's something. I know Jaina obviously is doing her thing, and her mom is there. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how everything happens. So I'm, I just haven't had time where I haven't prioritized it because I'm such a horde, horde lover. Um, <laughs> so I'm horde. That's that's the short short answer. I'm horde throughout, and okay. all support to Sylvanas, our <laughs> wonderful war chief. Ah, can I ask what you're playing then? Uh, I am a blood elf priest. Um, the first character I ever created. Uh, first undead priest, and then human priest, and then back to blood elf. Oh wow! Yeah, that's really good. How are you, how are you finding priest? Because I know that they got their shadow got a bit buffed. I think with the last um, patch. That's right. Yeah, I've I've always mained holy, mm-hmm. um, and I know there's a lot of people raving over discipline and how amazing it is. I've never really quite enjoyed it. This expansion, I finally dove dove into it, and I can see the appeal. I'm just not very good at it. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I just kind of go back to holy, and I love, you know, it's just pure healing. There's nothing else. You just focus on, oh, a health bar goes down, just get it back up. <laughs> it's straightforward, my kind of gameplay. Um, I've, I've gone back and forth with Shadow. I really enjoyed Shadow in, in Cataclysm, actually. Yeah. Um, and then I've kind of come back and forth, and right now I I dabble. I dabble in BFA, but not a lot of it, and not a lot of attention for Shadow this expansion. That's fair enough. You like what you like. That's right. How did you start, um, you know, your love for World of Warcraft? How did you get into it? So, I'm a youngling, I'll be honest. I the, When I first heard of World of Warcraft, I was like nine or ten and there was a friend who who played it and and said oh this is a great game and that was the time i don't know if you remember this or if they even had it here but in sweden they had a thing called a 14 game card and i remember something similar right so basically it was you went to a game store and and they had these 14 14 day trail and uh, game cards i guess mm-hmm and basically, it was like a pound forty, like pound forty for fourteen days. And I, I, I bought one of those, and I downloaded the game, and I remember creating a human mage, and then a night elf druid, and then a human priest, and I got them all to level eight, and it was so, so <laughs> epic and amazing. <laughs> and then those fourteen days were out, and I had to buy a new one, and everything was gone. But I think, oh no! I, yeah, so because it was all only fourteen days, and you had to create a new trial account every time, um, and so 
I think I bought that like three times and I loved it, but I was 10. So I, I couldn't buy the full game and in any way afford a subscription. Mm-hmm. But I kind of, I, I did that. And then I just kind of let that fall away. And then I remember Burning Crusade. I remember seeing the trailer for it and I was, mm, mm, I mean, come on. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, and another friend discovered private servers. <laughs> Um, I think many have done that in the past or still are doing that. I don't, I'm not judging yes. at all. Right. <laughs> so I, I played some, I played a, a hunter in Burning Crusade, a melee hunter, as I like to, to say it. Um, <laughs> that was not a thing back then. I was just, I was, <laughs> that I was, was I was not 12. survival by the way. No, no, I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I loved it. I, it was amazing. Um, and then I kind of dropped out of that again. And I remember, I think I saw some video of, of a machinima of Oxhorn. And I don't know if you've ever seen him, but Oxhorn was a creator a while back. And he did these, I love this, his machinimas. They were mm-hmm. great. They were a lot of comedy, well, all comedy. Um, and they just kind of pulled me back and I started seeing all these creative things with WoW and the song Ulduar, the parody song Ulduar, which was a parody of The Way You Are, I think. <laughs> um, have you have you heard it, So Yeah, I know it. <laughs> I think most people do play WoW or have for a while. And that was obviously when Ulduar was new and just as... It, it was in that time... I started playing uh, retail. So I got Vanilla, I got Burning Crusade, and I got Wrath. And I just kind of boosted through all that and got up to to Northwind. And yeah, I just loved it. I had a friend who was already level 80, so I just kind of joined him and we did a lot of heroics. Already then I was healing and I had my dual spec thing because that was the thing back then. So I did Shadow and Holy. Um, Yeah, I just loved it. I fell in love with it and I so many nights of riding around Dalaran uh, shouting in, in, in trade chat to get an invite to Pug ICC. Oh, <laughs> those were the days. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes so painful saying, days, I have to admit. Yeah, I'll be honest. I, I was kind of excited to get Dalaran back in Legion and then I started flying around Dalaran again. And, you know, you just keep flying Around, around yeah un- until you hit bfa and it's like there's no flying for you not yet nope <laughs> <laughs> all right let's let's jump into the the topic question for for this show and um I've, I've made it a bit like bigger so you wanted to talk about people who were creative and creativity that um is based on, on world of warcraft so artists inspiration from world of warcraft um, so you've already talked a little bit about the WoW parodies. Now I have to admit, when you said Charm, there was another person that I don't know if you remember her, but I used to love watching the videos by Amber Isolta. And she had a Draenei in most of her uh, videos. And she's also a singer and she had really fun parodies. So that's another person that I think that people need to check out. Don't think she's doing it anymore. I know she's still playing. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed um, her YouTube channel. That's great. I have I actually haven't heard of her. Amber, you said Amber. Amber Isolta. Isolta. I have to check that out. Yes, I will. I will send you some links after the show. That's great. Yeah, do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, but why this topic? I, I have a suspicion, but <laughs> why why this topic? <laughs> um. Well, as I said, it was it's kind of the creatives that got me into it. You know. Um, yes, I had, you know, I'd, I'd played some Trials and some 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 Burning Crusade, but then I saw these videos that were so creative, like Oxhorn uh, created these amazing things where he, I, I didn't understand how he filmed the, the game and like edited it. And it was like a full, you know, it's a, it was a video production. It was a film production. Um, and and Charm obviously uh, did some great things. I remember Nin as well. Uh, that was like, I was, I don't know, I was 14 and there was this guy who rapped about World of Warcraft on the meme. Come on, it can't be better than that. Um, so I, I think 
partly because it did get me started again actually getting into this game it just is mm-hmm. uh but also because there's so much talent in this community so much talent so many wonderful musicians uh writers uh, comedians you know and i mean that right now in my mind i'm just talking about youtubers and there's amazing amount of people doing podcasts like yourself mm-hmm. um and <clears throat> Yeah, it's just been an inspiration to me and the times when I haven't been able to play as much these creators have kept me engaged in the game as well as in the community. So even if I've I've left the game for a little bit, I, it feels like I haven't left the community. Mhm. And I think that's an amazing thing that creators can do for people. Um And when you talk about community, is it for you like the YouTubers who create the content, the podcasters, Do you also look at things on on Twitter that are created by by people who who are quite into the whole Warcraft community on there? Uh, lately I have, but really in the pa- past year and a half is when I really got into Twitter and podcasts as well for that matter. But but yes, uh, there's wonderful people on Twitter. Um I I'm the kind of people I love I love seeing art on Twitter. I don't yeah. know all of these I'm not in I'm not an artist. I don't know things. <laughs> But I love seeing <laughs> talented people create things. And so Twitter is the perfect forum for me because I I can see them share these things that they create, that they draw, that they um and and I get to enjoy it. And <laughs> I sh- I share it, but I I I I don't know anything about it, but I enjoy it. So Twitter is definitely something that I I've I've delved into and, po- and podcast has actually been kind of what I've really gotten into the past year. Mm-hmm. And, and that's something that really in a sense keeps me in the community. And when I say community, I guess I mean um the people playing really. What's what's keeping the community engaged? What's what are people not liking? What are people liking? Mm-hmm. Um what's good about the expansion? Uh so this fall I haven't had that much time to play sadly. Uh like I told you I haven't even it's just the first week still but I haven't gotten into the Sarah Lore yet and I'm probably not alone with that but I don't know when I'll be able to go into it. But listening to podcasts like The Starting Zone or or yourself for that matter I get to hear what other people are enjoying. There seems to be a lot of great stuff about about the, Sar- the battle for the Sarah Lore right now. Mhm. Um, so that's kind of what i mean when i say community and obviously there's there's a lot of bad stuff in the community right now <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah no that that's very true so what prompted you to to make your own um is it podcast or youtube how how are you i'm i'm doing it on on itunes i okay. also put something out on youtube it's mm-hmm. it's on It's not well produced. <laughs> it's just a background and the sound, and that's it. So it's really more of an of an of a podcast thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but what got me in, interested in starting it? I've always wanted to create things. I've always loved writing. Always loved performing, and being on a stage. And a podcast is kind of like a a virtual stage. Mm-hmm. And, where you don't have to engage face to face with people. <laughs> so, uh I don't mind that either, but it's just um so I've always had that interest. And then a while back this fall actually in October, I heard about uh, the Hafel report who were on uh, on this show not. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Um and I kind of I listened through all of the episodes in two days because <laughs> uh, they're so short they're just a few minutes like 10 minutes and I I just plowed through that at work and it got me really excited to do something on my own so I reached out to to Tash Mifuni and uh, the creator of that show if you don't know it's uh it's basically an in character radio show in World of Warcraft um and Tash Mifuni is, is wonderful he, he got back to me and i kind of chatted with him and he really encouraged me to to create something so i gave it a shot uh, and the first thing i created uh, was not good 
Um, I did something similar, like a, I, I kind of did what what the half full report was doing, mm-hmm. but in my own way. But it was way too simi- um, similar, so it's called. Uh, yeah. too sim- so I just kind of I did that. Did, wrote three episodes and then just kind of dropped that and realized this is not for me. It's a great thing for them. They're doing it wonderfully. I love it, but it's not my thing. Mm-hmm. And so I realized what I really want to do is tell a story. So I wrote a short short story, and I recorded it, and just reading it and doing voices and characters, and, and found that I really enjoyed it. And and now I've I've just four chapters out, and it's just kind of following these two characters, the Blood Elf and a Gnome, on on different sides of the, the the faction war and i'm just kind of exploring just exploring what their characters are and, and where they're heading how did you come up with the blood elf and, and the gnome uh, the gnome has been uh, my go-to role-playing character for a while um, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a bit of an rp i i like i like just dabbling in it mm-hmm. um, and so that character is really just my in-game uh, warlock, uh, straight onto paper. Um, and the Blood Elf is more of... I mean, I have a Blood Elf Paladin, so that's kind of where that came from. But I just really like the idea of having this this character who is so... He tries to be virtuous, and he, he sees... Oh, maybe these people can actually be turned around, uh, but then there's just the reality of life sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I and I wanted something to, that clashed with each other. So this this blood elf that's very stoic, and this gnome that is incredibly playful and just kind <laughs> of, you know, he doesn't he just laughs all the time and smiles no matter where he's in. Uh, so, yeah, those just kind of seem to clash well. So. Okay, that sounds really, really, really cool. I'm, I'd love to start downloading them all and just listen to them. I, I love things like in character, but you, I think people know that I RP is for me the main thing in World of Warcraft now anyway. Right. So I'm, I'm always a big fan of that. Where do you see this this ideally going for you with, in the future? Do you have like a whole plan written out with where you want the story to go? I do. Um, for part of it. Right now, it's it's kind of led up to... It's not really a spoiler, but it's led up to the Battle of Dasar Alor mm-hmm. and the events there. And I have a plan going forward for these three... for for a few weeks ahead. And I don't know if this is going to happen. This is just in my mind. I haven't actually written this, the next chapter, that's supposed to be out on Tuesday. Um, but what I'm wanting to do is kind of have these characters walk, go through the events of the raid and also give like an audio guide for the raid encounters. Oh, wow. I have no idea if that's going to work or translate at all, but it just kind of, the idea intrigued me. So I'm going to try. I don't think they're going to actually, it's not going to be the characters fighting because obviously there's there's the heroes of, of Asroth that conquer all these wonderful things. Mm-hmm. And, but so that's that's kind of my plan right now and and I don't know if it'll work but we'll see so if nothing else it'll be like an LFR uh, guide <laughs> um, they'll be coming out as the LFR wings come out so on Tuesday or Wednesday if you're in, the, in Europe mm-hmm. and the first wing of LFR will be coming out and then also the next chapter will be coming out that hopefully fingers crossed um it will be an audio guide for the Raid Wing. Wow, it sounds incredibly ambitious, but really unique. I mean, it sounds like something I would, I think a lot of people would love to to listen to instead of watching another video of like tactics or something. <laughs> this sounds actually really interesting. Well, I hope so. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> and we'll see if it actually works out. <laughs> I hope so. I really do. All right. Did you have any more that you wanted to say about the topic of creativity in, in uh, that comes from World of Warcraft? Um, I think it's I I, I just want to 
I guess, put it out there and, and also hear your thoughts about it and how, wow, it, it's so rich, right? There's so much history and there's such a huge community. Um, and it's really a forum for creatives to just kind of take what they like about it and, and create things. And just no, there's so many, like I said, there's so many different kinds to be creative. There's writers, uh, artists, uh, you know, and they just kind of can make their own thing with this thing that we all love. And it can really just bring us all together. Um, and and I would just kind of like to hear what what brought you into being a creative in this community. Um, I think because for me, become a creative. I mean, I agree with you. Though. I think this world and this game, because it's been out for quite a long time now for a game, um, it builds a big fan base. You know, people will drop off, but in the, in the years, it has generated so many fans who are really creative. I mean, and, and you know, games and books and, and movies have always been a great form of inspiration for, I think, people who are creative. Um, I mean, I know for, for myself that I'm following quite a lot of people on DeviantArt who have a lot of WoW fan art that they create. Um, and not just WoW, but also other games. And, and, and I just like seeing their interpretation of their characters or how they just make such amazing digital paintings, really. And uh, I mean, Fabelina is, is one of them who I think does amazing things. And you can just see that as soon as BlizzCon comes and people want a badge, you know, she gets commissioned so much because everyone wants a badge of their character so that right. people recognize them. And, and I think that is already showing that creativity in the community is like quite in high standards. I don't think anyone really looks down upon it or, or frowns upon it anymore. Um, BlizzCon itself. Look at look at the cosplayers out there. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's just <laughs> it baffles me that people work an entire year to get these costumes that are insane at times with with how much work has gone into them, and it, it's just it. I think that that is just amazing. And then of course you know you have the people like the YouTubers, the podcasters, even I think entertainers on Twitch who who really make Warcraft their main focus. I think that kind of creativity is amazing as it is. And then let alone people like Charm and, and Amber Salter who who do song parodies because that's a whole nother level, I think, with them <laughs> with what you're doing. And and yeah, I, I'm I'm loving it. I think it is something for people who enjoy the game to have that extra thing there that you know just um how do i say that it enriches the love for the game and it, it mm. just it gives it that extra little shove of look this is what you can create and this is you know what you could have in addition to just playing the game and i think for me it, it just started that you know um a very long time ago when when i thought I want a podcast because I was listening to podcasts and um, I was listening to oh ladies no not ladies of fleet it was uh, another podcast with girls and I can't remember it was Leela Turkey and this we're talking about an old podcast now probably <laughs> probably 12 years ago and um, I just I was amazed by the fact that these were all women talking about World of Warcraft <laughs> and uh, and I was like oh my god I want to do something similar <laughs> and right? uh, yeah so so I started with um with Girls from WoW and I, I set that up and I found co-hosts and, and I've, I've switched co-hosts a lot until um Raven and EJ and you know at a certain point it wasn't just not for me anymore I I I felt a bit out of love with the game uh, so I took a break for a very long time and then I came back and I kind of wanted to do it myself. And that's when, because I love having co-hosts, but you do have to, you know, make sure that everyone syncs up with times and there's a lot of organization with it. And now I can just basically, I do my interviews whenever I want 
and or whenever the guest has time, of course, <laughs> more like that. And um, I, I just do everything around it myself, and and it works for me at this point in time. But I think the reason of hearing other girls making something and wanting to have a voice in the community was really important to me. Um, I think, and I've, I've actually said this on on Realm Maintenance. I think people who say I create a podcast, but just for me and not for other people who want to listen to it. I, I call BS on that. I'm really sorry if I unfed any fun with that, but <laughs> I always said, if, if that's true, then why are you uploading it for people to download? Yeah. That doesn't make sense to me. So you want, you know, people to hear what you have to say. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Look at all the podcasters out there. Everyone wants <laughs> <Right>. to be heard. <laughs> so yeah. it's not something to be ashamed of at all. And, you know, it is, I think, as a creator, very important that you do love what you're doing because people will hear that. And I think it's also very, imp or, or see that even in your artwork. I think it is very important that you also stay true to yourself. But if someone gives you advice or a tip, take it on board. I'm yeah, not saying that you have to, yeah, you, you don't have to do anything with it if that's not something that you want to. But, you know, if, for instance, I don't know, um, you're doing commission work, for instance, for drawings, and someone says, someone who knows what they're talking about, and they say, okay, maybe if you tried this, you this looks a little bit better. And you don't do that. You might not get half the commissions you would be getting if you would take that on board. The same goes for podcasts. You know, your sound might be so off that if you, yeah, it is, it is never nice hearing that someone says, oh, I, I couldn't listen to it because of, okay. But that's yeah. the whole thing, you know, if they can't listen to your stuff, then <laughs> no one is going to download and no one will want to listen to your show anymore. And and the thing is, you do want to get your word out there. So sometimes you have to tweak it a little bit. Something That's something I learned over the years because <laughs> I was not a fan of editing <laughs> at all in the beginning. And um, it's now a running joke when I say I'm, I'm editing <laughs> the show. It because, work, though. Yeah, well, oh, you know, it's it's having a good microphone, I guess, and finally a program that doesn't suck when you record. That helps. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's things that you learn over the years. Like I said, you know, I've I've been doing it for a very long time now, and it, it just I'm not going to say it gets easier, but you you roll with it, and you have to learn from things. God, when I came back, I had no idea where to even start. I thought, okay. Um, what, what's a good recording program nowadays? I have no idea. Uh, what can I do? Those I are small things. I think that's something, um, you said two things that I want to uh, point out, like with just learning and realizing that it's actually something you, you have to really stay at it. Mm -hmm. so everyone says this, every interview I've heard about someone talking about how to start a podcast or anything really, if you want to start something, one, make sure you enjoy it, and two, keep at it because it's hard, um, and you, like you have to learn things to do new things. And I've I've just now reached that point where, oh, I've really enjoyed this. I love writing. You know, oh, it's great. And then four chapters in, I haven't even started the next one because I haven't had the time and not even the inspiration right now. But if I want to keep it going, I just have to get to it. You know, and that's something really inspiring about people who just keep going. You know, it's absolutely. Uh, it's uh, if you have the motivation, go for it. Uh, and I think that's that also goes hand in hand with actually taking advice. Uh, like you said, if someone tells you, you know, maybe you can change this, or obviously respectfully, if someone shouts at you, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> leave it be. But like I said, I I, I personally wrote Tosh Mifumi and asked him for inspiration and i made this radio broadcast and i sent it to him and he said you know i i don't i don't think this is for you and he said it very respectfully but it was good for me because then i could move on to finding what's actually more my thing and if i hadn't if i hadn't asked him and he if he hadn't been honest with me i wouldn't have gotten to writing this thing that i'm writing now so it's all about trying things out and, and sticking with it, I think. 
Absolutely. No, I, that's true. Um, and, you know, everyone will have an off day. I am sure that there are podcasters, artists, YouTubes, YouTubers out there who have one day that they're like, they're producing something like, okay, it's not my best one, but you know what? At least something's out there. I'm, I'm okay that something is out there. Um, I don't hate it. <laughs> you will always get something that you're not entirely happy with. And that is a, a point of learning. And, you know, just think of yourself, why, why weren't you happy? What could have gone better? Is it just, you know, sometimes it's just your mood. Sometimes your mood prevents you from doing certain things. I think we're all human and it just happens. But yeah, I think realizing that it's not going to be perfect from the start. Not at all. I mean, you have such amazing artists out there. I doubt that they could immediately draw like that. They, they I mean, mm. that is years of practicing and redoing things and just seeing, you know, if you compare their first artwork to what they do now, there's a huge difference in between those years. And I, I think people need to realize that, that if you, anyone can do what everyone else is doing, it's just having that dedication to it and making sure that, you know, you just roll with the punches, learn from, from the bad days. And if you really want to continue doing this, then you can make it successful. You just have to keep doing it. Um, but it, it's, it's hard work. I think a lot of people sometimes underestimate how much work goes into certain things. I'm, I'm sure that, you know, uh, look at look at the cosplayers. I, I can't imagine oh how gosh, much work yeah. goes into that. And I think it can be very overwhelming <laughs> for someone who wants to start cosplay. But again, those people didn't start from on that level, you know? You have to start from, from the bottom and then just go upwards. That's, that's where you're, I can't see people going downwards. So just, you know, if it's one step, it's one step. No one cares that you you are at the end of the year that you need to be at the highest level. I wouldn't worry about that at all. But if you feel like you have something to put out there, creative-wise, then do it. Because I have the utmost respect for people who are creative and bring something towards the community and just let others enjoy what you're doing, whether that's cosplay or writing, because I've seen so much amazing fan work out there that is just so well written um like honestly these people could just write novels themselves it's that good and there's so many good podcasts and youtubers out there and yeah definitely just uh, i would scour the internet just for to see things that you really really enjoy and if you're inspired and want to do something yourself then what's stopping you absolutely nothing mm, well said <laughs> Well, that's, that's me and my tangent. <laughs> Did you have anything else that you wanted to say about uh, creativity in WoW? Nope. I'm just impressed and admire people who do it. It's great. Yeah. And you know what? One thing that I want to say, I think it's really good that Blizzard is now acknowledging these people. Um, yes. Either putting them in game um, with, with an NPC or just the fact that they do highlights for those people. Or uh, I think it is really, really amazing that Blizzard is just acknowledging the creative um, fan base out there. I think that's that's just amazing. It's a huge step forward. Absolutely. I, I think more games and developers should do that, really. Right, let, let's put this back to Battle for Azeroth. Um, now, you've already said that you've mostly seen Horde side. Mm -hmm. So what are you most impressed with in Battle for Azeroth? I would have to say it's the the art and the setting, uh, I, I guess when I say setting, uh, kind of how the art fits with the story, <laughs> just how they seem to fit together. I, I don't know why, but I really enjoyed the Valdun questline for Horde. Okay. How come? It might have been because I, I played it on release and for like, it was midnight. <laughs> and I kind of played for six hours. So, I mean, I kind of just been sleep deprived, who knows? <laughs> but um, I really enjoy that. And and it's just, I feel like the stories fit well with where they're placed, which might seem like a, a, a minor thing, but I find that I really enjoy that when it's just not a story in this random place, but it's like, oh, there's an actual setting for this story and it makes sense. Like, Voldoon is this, kind of prison exile place where they sent all the Sandalari that they don't want. And from that has kind of just 
built this tension between exiles and Volpira and um, the Sethrak. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so I've, I guess I just really enjoyed the story <laughs> and the setting of the expansion so far. And I'm, I'm actually really excited to finally dip into the Alliance side. I just oh. haven't had the time yet. I, I know that feeling. <laughs> I still need to finish that side. <laughs> yeah. What are you least impressed with if you have to pick something? Ooh, that's the thing. I Because I haven't had that much time I, I experienced, I haven't had the feeling that, oh, I wanted more out of this. Like a lot of people say that they want more out of Warfronts. But to me, that was just kind of, oh, I did it once. Great, I quite enjoyed it. I'm probably not going to do it again, but that's fine. But I guess if anything, like I haven't burnt out on anything because I haven't been able to play that much, but I was really excited for Alvin Expeditions um, and I enjoy them, mm-hmm. but it's really only when I play with other people and it's not really because the island expeditions are so engaging. It's more because it's a nice group size of three people and you can just banter and do things. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I guess I wish there was something more to the island expeditions. And the new addition in 8.1 was great. Um, you know, the little tweaks they added, but I still kind of want more from that. So that's, that's the one thing I'm a little bummed about with, yeah, the island expeditions. Okay. Um, yeah, I, this entire debate about asteroid armor, <laughs> I haven't even cared. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, I get an asteroid piece, I'm like, oh, okay. That's that's a piece. Great. I'll I'll, I'll click this. <laughs> so, and you know, there's changes coming, so I'm not worried about that. But yeah, I just kind of enjoyed where I'm at, and I don't have really too much to complain about. Um, if anything, I'm really sad about the way people have been reacting to everything Bliss- Blizzard does. Um, I just remember seeing the. Uh, this, no, uh, the survival guide for for 8.1 or Dishonored Lore, I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, and no, sorry, sorry. It was the developer Q&I with the creatives, with the writers. Oh, yeah. Gregory and, uh, oh, no, I totally lost his name. Um, I, I, I'm bad with names as it is. Yeah, but just how every single comment on that YouTube video was either fix the game or completely unrelated to what they were talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, that makes me sad because yes, it's totally valid to have problems with the game. I totally understand that. But at least when there's something so amazing as, I mean, these two writers have done a great, great job, I think with BFA. Uh, the story and the cinematics have been amazing. And the fact that that video was totally dislike bombed and all the comments were so negative, that made me sad. Um, not really with the game to do, I guess. It's more <laughs> with <laughs> it, the community. <laughs> it, it, I think you, you you do get that. And especially with like a big community like this, you get a lot of people who are very disgruntled as soon as something is not going the way they want it to go, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But it's actually quite positive that that is your only negative about, you know, the island expeditions and then sometimes how the community reacts. So oh. that's not too bad. <laughs> They're not too into that. <laughs> Not in my side, at least. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so, we already talked a bit about the community, but what has the Warcraft community meant to you? Um, well, like I said, it has really sparked my will to be um, mm-hmm. creative, so that's great. Um, but most of what it's done is it's really bound the friends that I already had, kind of from back home, like when I grew up. We started playing WoW together, and that has really just bound us close together. Um, And the fact that we had something to play together that could keep us engaged for so long. Mm. um, I think that has really meant a lot to me. It's kind of been a place for me and my friends to get together and socialize. Um, Even though we're we're far apart, I moved away fairly early. Some some of my friends moved to a new city to study, and I moved to to another city. But we could still spend time together um, and that's been really wonderful and I don't have as much time anymore to play with them because life is crazy and you move to a new country and all these Scotsmen just you know <laughs> ah 
who knows? <laughs> um, so, but I just really, I'm really appreciative that that there's a place where I can just spend time with my friends, and that might come and go. People might take a break, come back, but there's always that place where I know that eventually people will come back to WoW. If that is just a new and expansion lease for two months, they will be there. Oh, that, I like that, you know. And when you said that, I immediately thought of the um, the Cheers song in my head that it's that's a very old program anyone under the age of 30 you probably won't know it but that's, i know that it just, oh okay good everybody knows your name <laughs> exactly that just popped in my head and i thought that's really what world of warcraft is <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry that's a siren probably can hear that's that. fine that's fine I, I, we get them here as well um okay so what the final question that i always ask and it's the whole whisper thing. So what is your whisper? And a whisper could be fairy crafting, it could be a prediction, a wish, any just basically anything that you want to throw out there. So I mentioned at the beginning that I am very loyal to my war chief Sylvanas. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, she has gone from tactical victory to tactical victory, at least before like her entire maneuver on Teldrassil. You can have your own thoughts on that. That was a complete success. Uh, Lord Ron, unless Jaina had showed up, the lines, like, they wouldn't even have gotten inside the walls. I mean, come on. So, I'm... I'm predicting an assault on Stormwind. Ooh! Yeah, I... Maybe not, not necessarily a raid, um, not even a dungeon, maybe just a scenario, but... I predict that at some point the horde will be invading Stormwind. That would be interesting, considering that the horde can already infiltrate Stormwind in the beginning of BFA. Yeah. So yeah, that would be really, really interesting. I, I would be very, very shocked in a way to see that, because that would be very bold. But it would be great because Sylvanas has already been talking about that. So it's true. She has, and she wants, you know, a citizen of Stormwind to be raised for her own people, so... Exactly. Ah, that is a good one. Well, we'll, yeah. see, we'll see in the future. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kadian, thank you so much for the interview. And if people want to find out more about you, more about the show that you're doing, where can they find you? So, the show is called Tales of War. And right now it's on iTunes and SoundCloud. I'm hopefully going to get it on Stitcher and, and tune in soon. I just got to get down to it and actually do it. <laughs> um, but Tales of War, ho hopefully soon on your podcasts. Uh, and if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm there as well, at Ocadian. One word, it's O-H and then Cadian. If you don't know how to spell it, hopefully Syl will write it somewhere in the... <laughs> show notes for this i will <laughs> don't <laughs> worry about it i will <laughs> okay well thank you so much for being a guest thank you for having me it's been wonderful I'd, it's a great time just to have a chat it was really lovely so i hope you guys enjoyed that interview i certainly did it was really nice talking to to Kadian. and of course we were talking about all the creativity that people had um in, in World of Warcraft and, you know, all those kind of things. So I wanted to know from you guys who some of your favorite content creators are. So that could be people who, like I said, you know, do cosplay, arts or um, podcast videos, all those kind of things. And uh, you guys responded, Falamoyo Krava, or uh, of course the beautiful Amanda said, she has several, actually. She said, The Blue Recluse, because these guys are awesome and inspire me to have fun with Warcraft. Frazzlecast, who always has epic guests on and is one of the best dudes I know. Snacksaroth, because of food. Very important point, I have to admit. And of course, Talies and, and Evatel, because they make awesome videos and genuinely excite me about the game, even when I'm feeling a bit meh about it. And I think that's really important, you know, that you can still get hyped by content because content creators out there make it so epic. Frazzlecast said, I love Talias and, and Evatel, just how much video content they make. Always have energy and just a joy. 
I completely agree. I completely agree. Rob to the Max from The Training Dummies, that's a podcast you also need to check out if you haven't already, but I'm sure you have, said, gotta put <laughs> Taliesin and Avatar on the top of that list, laying truth and keeping it real while delightfully sassy and entertaining. I absolutely adore them. I think we all need a bit of sass in our lives, so yeah, if you have not watched um, anything by Taliesin and Avatar, you really need to do yourself a favor and go to YouTube and watch their videos. Um, I'm going to butcher your name, so I'm really sorry, but uh, Poyekal Satin, is that? I hope that's how I, I pronounce it. Said podcast, Worgen's Howl. She makes awesome cosplay outfits for BlizzCon and gives updates on the process all the way through the completion. They also hype new artists in the community, and I think that's, that's great. So, yeah, I, I have listened to the Worgen's Howl. It's on my download list every uh, time, so I can't but agree so listen to those podcasts if you want to have more inspiration about which podcasts to download you should really really also listen to realm maintenance because Ro is really good with um with picking up new podcasts and talking about other ones it's it's just you know your guide almost to all the podcasts out there and the same goes for there's so many youtubers out there have a browse and that actually brought me back to some some people that I forgot about um, I, I just really like watching old videos like Nixium and um, uh, now the final comment on Twitter was from who I wrote that and it I find it very difficult to read this because it's about me which is very nice um, but it's not something I normally do but I, I just because you made the comment I don't want to not say it but who I wrote that said there's this amazing person, I think so anyway. There's been a few podcasts I've heard them on. Just a few. <laughs> yeah. I, I switch far too much. Funny, insightful, puts their own spin on the way they play. And they're kind of one of uh one of my favorites. The name at McMonkeys. Thank you so much, who I wrote that. That's really, really sweet of you. And um I I never really know how to respond to stuff like that. But I am very grateful for that. So if it wasn't for you guys, I um I would not be doing this, in all fairness. I uh I would just, I don't know, sit at home and be very quiet and play my game. <laughs> and I don't want to do that. So, yeah, I, I'm very happy with all the creative souls out there in the community and all the amazing people on Twitter. I think uh, the Twitter community is probably the best community out there, if I'm really honest, for World of Warcraft. It's really, really nice. And I just enjoy seeing all the creativity from people. I've seen some amazing cosplay, but I think, you know, like artist Fabelina is, is one of my favorites. Really check her stuff out. It's gorgeous, but there are many more people out there who I'm just forgetting about now. But yeah, we have a lot of stuff as Warcraft uh, fans and I think we're, we're kind of blessed with that. So with that, I'm going to leave it for this week. This was show number 24. Uh, next week... Uh, I am not quite sure what I'll use as a topic yet. I need some inspiration. I'm sure I will uh, tweet it to you sometime this week. But anyhow. And if you need to contact the show, you can always do that uh, the following ways. So you can email me, whispersofwarpodcast at gmail.com or you can send me a direct message on Twitter or just reply to something I, I said on Twitter on at whispers underscore of underscore war and the podcast can be found at whispersofwar.podbean.com. Have a, a lovely time in Azeroth. Thank you again for downloading the podcast and listening to my rambles. And I will hopefully hear and see you all next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>